I've studied hundreds of hours of the best fighters in the world focusing on their jab. And I realized something that they're all doing that coaches don't teach. I noticed that I was doing some of these things that helped me have the success that I had in boxing to win an Olympic medal. And I noticed the foundation of the jab is built in a six part formula. And this is a technique formula that's turned average boxers into household names. And if you master these six things, I guarantee here that it will transform your full boxing game. And this starts with part one, which is making sure your base is solid. And the reason is, without your feet and solid base, nothing else will follow. This is the foundations of your boxing stance. And when you are standing to fool the jab, it's important you have loose knees. Some coaches tell you, bend your knees and be flat-footed. Some coaches tell you stay on your toes. And I noticed what a lot of the fighters were doing was a combination of both of them things. But the main thing is keeping them knees loose and you've got that solid base as well. If you look at someone like Lennox Lewis, who had one of the best jabs ever, like this, you'll see his feet and he's moving. Compared to someone like this, who's not got the best solid base, you will see a huge difference in the performance of their jab. And the next part of the formula will make all the difference. And once you figure this out, it will change everything in your boxing. And that is telegraphing the punch. And I don't mean telegraphing when it's like a big lean back and throwing it. You shouldn't be doing that anyway. I mean telegraphing in the slightest millisecond way. If you look at someone like Floyd Mayweather, he'll be in there where his opponent says, boom, he jabs them in the face. They don't realize that it's coming out. Then again, boom, it hits you. Then again, they're moving around, boom, it hits you. Not shown when you're gonna throw that punch. And this is something that I mastered to have success in my career. I would know within 30 seconds of a fight if this was gonna be an easy night's work, if I could land my jab. Because if you can land your jab, you've got way more chance of being able to land any other punch. And now the way that you can do this and stop telegraphing your punches is by starting slow. Very often I will see people throwing the jab and it'll be like this. Now that right there was a telegraph of the punch. If we watch it again in slow motion, you will see I slightly pull that arm back and then throw it out. Now, if you want to be a high level boxer, you can't slightly pull your hand back and throw it out. It's got to come from here and then out and back. So when you slow this down, throwing it from your face all the way out and all the way back. Again, getting in the habit of doing this. And when you combine this with the next part, it will make all the difference. But you've got to start slow. And then when we move into part three, which is looking for speed rather than power. All these top fighters understand they're not going to knock someone out with their jab. Ugh. I mean, it would be great to do that, but we're not. We throw in the jab to set up other punches, to get ourselves into range, to get your opponent out of their game plan and to keep them thinking. And you do this by throwing a really fast jab. And when I studied all of these top fighters, they understood that they were throwing that fast jab, frustrating their opponents, and then throwing the other punches behind that. And before we move on to part four, which a lot of boxers are neglecting, I wanna give you three tips to be able to punch faster with your jab that you can practice the next time you're in the gym. The first one is think about speed. If you're thinking about speed, you will punch faster. But doing this without telegraphing the punch, because often when people think about speed, they'll and that was a telegraph, pulling the back, pushing out, pulling the back, pushing out. No, you need to think about speed in a way where it's coming straight from your face, all the way out, all the way back. Like that, speed jab. Now I'm thinking about speed, I'm not thinking about power. And because I'm thinking about the speed, it's thrown faster. Tip number two is keeping your hand out a little bit here. If my hand's out here, rather than here, it's got half the distance to travel. And if it's got half the distance to travel, guess what? It'll get there twice as fast. And Floyd Mayweather was a master at this, where your arm is out here, then throw it. Yes, it's got no power in, but we're not talking about power now, we're talking about speed. And tip number three, see what I did there? I did something that Manny Pacquiao was a master at, and that was keeping on your toes, moving in and out, and when I step, I punch. Stepping and punching at the same time is key to speed and also that will help you generate a little bit power in the punch, what I'm gonna talk about in a second. Now part four is in two sections. How to land it and where you should be aiming. Because you could have the fastest jab in the world, but that doesn't mean it's going to land every single time. Because 
the jab is the most common punch that fighters throw, so they're kind of expecting it. So what we want to do is not let him know when I'm going to throw this jab. And there's a couple of ways you can do this. The first way is by throwing a feint. If I'm fainting like this, he doesn't know what I'm going to do. And this is something when I was studying Tyson Fury, does all the time. He's in front of his opponents. He's fainting, he's fainting. And they don't know when this punch is going to come. Then all of a sudden, faint, faint, bam, throws it, lands it. And with the faint, you can faint with your hands like this, or you can faint with your feet like this. Like I mentioned about Manny Pacquiao, when he's always on his toes like this, this is something that he did to land his jab and his other punches without their opponent knowing what's coming. Because he's on his feet all the time, then all of a sudden, bam, 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 bam throw multiple punches at once. Now, where do you aim? Do you aim in the chin? Do you aim on the temple? <laughs> I mean, if you can aim there. But where I used to aim, and I had success in the amateurs especially, and the pros, I guess, is I would aim on the top of the head. The reason being is because that will knock someone's head back. And if you're knocking someone's head back, what will happen? Well, it looks amazing to the judges every time your jab is coming out and knock on the head back because you're hitting the top heavy part, which is making the head go back. As well, your opponent who you're in there with, when he's getting his head knocked back as well, that's just disorientating him even more. Even though it's not powerful, it's got his eyes looking up in the sky. And that is frustrating the hell out of him. I remember I boxed the world silver medalist from Croatia, and this is something he did to me. Boom, my head went back. I was like, oh no. We're boxing, boom, he had this amazing jab. And it made me think about how do I get out the way of his jab rather than thinking about what am I going to do to win the fight. It took my game plan away from me. So aiming for the top of the head rather than the chin is an absolute game changer. Now I guarantee you, them four parts will help you through a great jab, but there's another major hurdle that you need to get over to have success like these champions. And that brings us on to part five and six. This is how you get into great habits with your sessions. And just like you can see Floyd doing right here, all he's focusing on is his jab. And Floyd has one of the best jabs of all time round after round, working on that jab. Not focusing on anything else, he's just blasting in that jab on the heavy bag. And this right here is perfecting that jab, getting him into great habits every time he throws it. But to do this, you need to identify your own mistakes if you have any when you're throwing the jab, which <laughs> you probably will have. So what I've done, I've created a free mini video package, not only to help you identify your mistakes, but also to help you perfect your punches. You can click the link below and get this package for free. No strings. I want to help you. It's a gift for you. So click the link below and get this free video package. Now, moving on to number six. What I noticed with all of these champions, their coordination was fantastic. And to get great coordination, you need to drill your hands and feet at the same time. Because when you're throwing the perfect jab, your lead foot and your jab hand will land in sync at the same time. So you need to do drills for this. And the best way to do this is doing agility ladder drills for boxing. And I've created this full video right here, what you can click on now and see these 25 agility ladder drills that will take your jab and boxing to the next level. Click here and watch this video next.